The Whirlwind's innovative design, the true monocoque construction and low drag aerodynamics, heavy concentrated armament was continued with advanced for the day operational service systems. Of particular note being the hydraulic system. As far as we can ascertain, the Whirlwind was the first aircraft fitted with variable position hydraulic controls against the common practice of fixed position controls. This was made possible by the employment of rotary control valve gear designed and manufactured by Doughty in place of the more normal axial spool valves. From a purely engineering perspective for a combat aircraft it could be argued that there was an element of design over common sense given the amount of equipment powered by hydraulic pressure. The main undercarriage, the retractable tailwheel, Fowler flaps, inner slats, outer slats, radiator outlet flaps, all of which was fairly essential. Exactor hydraulic systems were also used to control the throttles, the propeller pitch and the fuel mixture settings. Temperamental at best and not liked by pilots. In early production aircraft the cannons were also cocked and fired by hydraulic pressure. The port and starboard fuel tanks were opened and closed by hydraulic controls operating fuel jacks in the engine nacelles. Combat damage or even a system's failure on the high pressure accumulator or on the single main pressure line would have had a catastrophic effect on the aircraft. All associated with the fire risk of the gallons of flammable light hydraulic oil required. Not to mention the complexity and weight of the systems and the high manufacturing cost. A double control gate was fitted for the operation of the undercarriage and Fowler flap. The undercarriage gate lever operated a spool hydraulic valve connected to the double acting jacks. The lever was sprung loaded sidewards requiring the pilot to move the lever away from the lock position before lowering or attracting the undercarriage. The lever springing into the opposite lock position at the end of the cycle. The flap lever operated a rotary valve allowing for variable movement of the Fowler flap. Like the undercarriage gate, the flap lever was also sprung loaded working against a series of notches in the gate allowing the pilot to select the appropriate flap angle the windscreen de-icing equipment was operated by the pilot via a Kai gas plunger pump situated at the top of the port side instrument panel. The pump followed the standard Kai gas pattern having a screw down front cap attached to the piston rod working the piston head and two opposed one way valves. The pump body being of large diameter short stroke unique to the whirlwind with a rear face mounting against the usual Kai gas fuel pump. The pump was fed from a one pint tank mounted in the electrical housing just in front of the windscreen. The de-icing fluid being pumped to a spray bar that was situated at the bottom of the windscreen. The engine controls were also hydraulically operated through exactor manufactured equipment, the fittings being unique to the whirlwind. The throttle quadrant housing, the port and starboard throttle levers and the single fuel mixture lever. A second quadrant fitted after the throttles housed the port and starboard air screw speed control levers. No original engineering drawings or actual quadrants exist. Both quadrants have been re-engineered from the very few photographic images there are and the information from the AP manuals. While both quadrants are functional, 
due to the complete lack of information, the hydraulic internals have not been manufactured. The port and starboard fuel hydraulic cocks operated double acting jacks in the engine nacelles, a complex system given that both engines needed ground crew assistance to prime them before starting. Even with all the complexity and sophistication of the fuel system, the whirlwind was never designed with an engine or fuel tank cross fueling transfer system. A very strange design decision given a twin engine layout. Of even stranger design intent was the inclusion of hydraulically operated landing lights. The system had variable positioning control from a lever on the port side of the pilot's seat. The exactor system lowered or retracted the lights positioned under the outer main planes. No information now exists of the complex mechanical mechanisms or hydraulic valve assemblies required to operate the system. While the lever and release button function, the equipment has been locked in the fully retracted position. The Whirlwind Fighter Project is a not-for-profit charity run by a group of dedicated volunteers. If you feel you could assist in recreating this iconic World War II fighter, please visit our Facebook and web pages. Any donations can be made through our GoFundMe page. Also, please visit our active partner in the Whirlwind Fighter Project and future home of the Whirlwind, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum. Many thanks.